Eng ball in the prem? Say less. Eng Postacoglu from down under to the big time. He's just been appointed manager of Spurs after they failed at signing nope, any of nope, their main nope. targets. The Celtic boss fresh off winning the treble in Scotland has a gargantuan task on his hands at White Hart Lane. It's mission impossible out here. Win a trophy. That's why we're taking over this next era at Tottenham to see if an Aussie at the helm can take a team renowned for being Spursy all the way to the promised land of Europe. It's legit been a running joke on the channel for years. The meme just refuses to die every time they lose a major final in a video. Tottenham is the history of the Tottenham. So this is a chance for me to complete my redemption arc for Spurs fans. As an Aussie myself, I hope Ange can prove that this job isn't just a poison chalice and it can break the trophy drought curse. <laughs> After finishing the season in 8th, no European football, a step backwards for the club, it's going to be a bombastic summer. First up, it's time to sort out the brand new tactics, the style of play and the system that Postacoglu is going to implement. We're porting over that winning formula that he had at Celtic, the 4-3-3 holding formation. Mark my words, Ange Ball is going to take over the Prem, just give it time. We want this team to press after possession lost, have a slow build up and possession chance creation in attack. Ange's team's they're set up to hold the ball and play attractive football. And that's exactly what we want to try and replicate. We want this Spurs squad to forge their own new identity. From a flat five at the back to a total football makeover. With a starting transfer budget of only £68 million, we're going to have to start raising funds and increase the resources we've got available based on real life events. We have an extensive transfer list that Ange wants to get rid of. The big one is Harry Kane. His future is in the balance both round Madrid and Manchester United are targeting him. And Big Ange has some transfer targets of his own, but we must consider the kind of roster we have. We have so many players coming back from their loan spells next season. Wonder Kids, some utility players, some nice depth options. A couple of these guys are going to fill up brand new signings come season two, like Ndombele and La Celso. Plus, the generous youth academy we've been gifted here with 16 players that we could potentially call up to the first team. If you haven't noticed already, we've got the brand new 23 24 kits in game every team in the Premier League they're pretty much decked out in their brand new kits and it just adds that touch of realism it really lets us feel like we are in 2024 already a hectic transfer market is about to take place and Andrew will be flying the Aussie flag for us over in the Prem and don't you worry I'm sure he's gonna prove people wrong here at Spurs lately we've also been getting AI and chat GPT involved asking it what are some realistic signings for Ange to sign at Spurs it could really give us any particular insight nothing specific more just general areas like identify areas for improvement value for money signings an emphasis on promoting youth tactical considerations which we've already kind of ticked off and it's given us some actual specific options so this list is definitely something to consider as we delve into the rebuild and the first piece of business to get done in this Postacoglu era is going to be the signing of a brand new center back it's a trusty BCHD swap deal of course but we're bringing in the Wolves man Kilman. He's been heavily linked to the club. Fabrizio Romano's reporting it. Sky Sports are also reporting it as well. And we've managed to ship out a player who's been a long standing servant but is also on Ange's chop and block, Eric Dyer. It's pretty much a like for like change. Nothing too drastic. Just Max Kilman is younger at 25. And the next position that needed to be sorted out was the goalkeeping spot. A brand new number one is needed at White Hart Lane. Hugo Lloris is definitely headed towards the exit door. And there is only one man that Spurs are going after. It's David Raya from Brentford. Fellow London rivals, the Bees. I'm not quite sure how they're going to feel about this one, but long-time club captain will finally be departing. And the Spanish shot stopper joins on the books for £21 million on the dot. It would be rude of me not to fill this quota and sign an Aussie for the team as a backup goalkeeper, a number two, even a third string option. We've got to bring in the Socceroos international goalkeeper, Matty Ryan. And I know he's played for Arsenal. It was just on a short term loan deal. It doesn't really count. Do those really count at the end of the day as we've organized a swap deal with AZ Alkmaar offering up Fraser Forster plus 5.5 million pounds. Now this is the main flagship, the marquee signing, the one that's going to break the bank now that we've promoted all the teams up from the championship, relegated the likes of Leicester, Leeds and Southampton to the championship. There was no way that James Madison, an English international, was going to languish in the second tier with the Foxes. That's exactly 
exactly why we've brought him here. He's been heavily linked to the club, and I'm sure Ange is going to make him a top target for the summer. He picks up Spurs as number eight and could become a genuine superstar back up here in the Prem. We've offered up Emerson Royale, surplus through requirements, right back, plus 36 million pounds. A player that honestly you thought would just be too good to get relegated. Same as Leicester, a team you thought were too good to get relegated. The game says he's a right mid, but he can easily slot in at Cam and play in that number 10 role and create nightmares for defenders week in, week out. Now that move has literally bankrupted us. Alas, let the sales commence. I don't know how to put this to you guys, but the transfer window is pretty much over and we've been unable to sell any of our top talents. It's been failed transfer after broken down negotiations. Dramas upon dramas, the likes of Hugo Lloris and Harry Kane have still managed to stay at Tottenham this summer. This rebuild might actually have been harder than I thought. And the summary of our transfer business on the outage front was that we were able to ship out Brandon Austin on a one-year loan deal to Coventry City. But other than that, we have just copped L after L. We'll continue the scrimmage in January as here is Ange's first choice starting 11. All the players that are in the future first team plans and a part of the project. We've awarded the captain's armband to the Dane Hoiberg as January can't come quick enough. All right, progress is progress. A couple of little mini updates going on here as we finally arrange deals for Lucas Moura, a veteran of the club, a legend for what he did in getting Spurs to a Champions League final. But the Brazilian ex career mode wonder kid back in FIFA 14 will be leaving for £8.7 million. Pounds. And the former club captain will be joining him over in Spain for £10.5 million. Pounds. Hugo Lloris will be off to Barcelona. Now this team midway through the season is crying out for another centre back. Some defensive cover. We might just have the perfect solution. Evan and Dicker. He's currently not renewing his contract with Frankfurt in real life and is available on a free. It's felt like eons but finally some movement on the outage front and it's not a sale it's actually a loan deal departure. Pape Matasa who will be joining Lecce for six months the remainder of season one. Now another free signing I wanted to take advantage of is Rafael Guerrero the ultimate utility option. He's left Dortmund on a free to join Bayern in real life and even though it's unrealistic I wanted to make it happen he'll be joining us at the start of season two he'd be a quality signing for Spurs. He's a dynamic versatile player that can provide some cover in midfield and he's got a great free kick on him. Now I know what hyped up this Indica transfer it's just not working for us something in the game's glitched we can't sign him in January on a free. To make matters worse we're on the last hour of the January transfer deadline day we haven't been able to sell Harry Kane and Pedro Porro our starting choice right back has been recalled by Sporting even though he was playing pretty much every single game. I just don't understand this game at the best of times to be honest and it's still been a goddamn struggle to sell any of our transfer listed players. It might be a little bit of a tricky second half of season one for Ange Ball but let the games begin. The day has arrived. Spurs have a chance to win a trophy and it's the first season of having Ange at the helm. Could this be their moment? This is the side we've been building all season long. No Harry Kane up front. We've lost Pedro Porro and we're up against the inevitable Manchester City at Wembley for the FA Cup. Let's see if we can get the better of them in the quick sim. We're going to watch it play out. A couple of their star players look a little bit tired and Spurs absolutely get battered and fumble at the final hurdle again. Some things in life just never change. Death, taxes and Spurs not winning trophies. As Benton Kerr got us a goal back, it was a little bit too little too late. After the January period, we were able to agree a deal with Newcastle for £9.3 million to sell Ben Davies up north. A long-standing servant at the club who's been on the transfer list is finally on the departure. And here has been our campaign in a nutshell. Postacoglu has gotten this club back into the top four, beating Arsenal, finishing above them in the table and claiming in Champions League football, they lost out in the FA Cup final to the English champions, the Centurions Man City. I think Tottenham fans would take that back in the top four, a cup final. Surely that'll be a remarkable achievement next season as Luton, Brentford and Bournemouth all go down. Man City secured the domestic treble and it was a semi-final elimination over two legs to Liverpool 5-1. Now I forgot they were actually in the Champions League. I forgot to remove them from the competition but they were eliminated to the Europa where we see Arsenal take home the silver were, but we pretty much just threw the competition. I didn't want them focusing on the continental scene just yet. Season number one was probably going to be the hardest one to get through. We're experiencing some growing pains, some players coming and going. Our set roster just changing like the weather as we take a look at our top performers. And it was the two players that are currently on loan. We're making one permanent and 
and that's Dejan Kulusevski, the Swede with 19 goals and 15 assists, the best player, the MVP. At only 23, double figures in both departments like Hume Min Sun and James Madison, 34 goal contributions in all competitions, and Dan Juma, I mean, we're probably just going to find a better replacement striker for him, so we'll let him go. Yin Min Sun, fresh off his Across the Spider-Verse cameo with 19 goals and 11 assists, 30 goal contributions, and James Madison getting himself 26. The captain, Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, with 4 goals and 5, and Richarlson off the bench, scoring more goals than he did in real life with 4 goals and 1. Someone who's really impressed me and has just been a surprise package this season, Ryan Sessegnon, has managed to stay healthy. 3 goals and 15 assists from left wing back is going to provide some real competition for you dodgy when he returns from his loan spell. And Harry Kane proves to be the man who is just impossible to sell. He loves Tottenham too much. Christian Romero proves to be our Argentinian rock at the back with two goals and one. And another South American maestro in the middle of the park. It's Benton Kerr with two goals and 15 assists. After Hugo Lloris's departure, it was always going to be big gloves to fill. But David Raya accomplished it valiantly with 13 clean sheets in 39 appearances. It's a sensational debut managerial stint for the Aussie. Coming through to the top four, runners up in the FA Cup, a semi-finals Carabao. And that's just us scratching the surface. Season two, it's probably going to be the most hectic one yet, so strap in. We've transitioned into our second campaign and we've been gifted with a 102 million pound war chest to go play with. The board and Daniel Levy has trusted us with nine figures in the bank. And of course, we're not going to count the Kuluzevsky and Poro deals to our budget because realistically, they have already happened in real life and been made permanent. This team is going to look way different now with all the lone players returning. Yeah, the stud is back in the building. Our best performer. Where would we be without the Swede on the right? Dayan Kuluzevsky makes his return known. And for £58.7 million, it wasn't as much as I was expecting to pay. And in our efforts for the Pedro Porro deal, we actually included Jafet Tanganga, the club homegrown talent involved in the trade deal, plus £40.1 million. That's almost Almost 100 million spent right there, and we haven't even got started on the proper season two business yet. Whilst our striker situation is still up in the air and Harry Kane's future is yet to be determined, we had to make a statement signing at the back and reinforce our defense. The Indica free signing wasn't enough if we wanted to compete on multiple fronts and make Tottenham a big European force again. That's why we broke in the bank and splashed the cash on Jules Kunde. Arriving from Barcelona, he'll take the number 32 and will be starting right next to Romero and we agreed a deal with the Catalans for £60 million on the dot. Kilman had his work cut out for him pretty much starting every single game next to Romero last year. As he is initially a right back he can also play at centre back but I want to convert him into a fully fledged centre half and that partnership with Romero is going to be something special. And how could I forget the second Frenchman in a row something about French defenders recently have been tickling my fancy so welcome to the club, welcome to England Evan Indica. Maybe about 6 months to too late, but we won't talk about it. Now, after Madison's excellent debut outing for Tottenham, we want to convert him into a fully fledged camp back to where he belongs, and he's gotten a hefty upgrade alongside it. And someone who we just wanted to convert for a bit of cover on the right hand side, we've got too many left backs now. Sergio Reguilon will also be a right back. Kunde's minor change, he's now back to being a centre back. Ange is really getting the most out of these position changes, and it shows. Now, after Richardson's terrible season at Spurs in real life, he really didn't even contribute much in the first season of this rebuild. We're actually going to offload him alongside Harry Kane and just completely reinvent our striker department. The Indica welcoming cutscene is masking over the fact that we have sold the Brazilian to AC Milan for £45.3 million in order to cut the wage bill and to raise some funds around here. We've got some big plans for Ange's attacking front and Richelson is currently not in the future first team project. No way. No way, it's actually happening. This, uh, I need to pinch myself. It seems too good to be true. But Harry Kane is now finally departing the club. Yes, Spurs, say goodbye to your hometown hero. The boy from the academy. He'll deny being an Arsenal fan back when he was a kid. But he is a Spurs legend, a goal-scoring hero. The top goal scorer at the club he is now departing to Aston Villa of all teams for £87.4 million. I don't care who. As long as we sold him, even to Arsenal, I would have accepted it with open 
open arms and he has now become a villain. It's kind of hard to imagine Tottenham without Harry Kane, but hey, we are now in that reality. And the superstar striker replacing Kane up front, well, say hello to my little friend. Now, we've had our eyes on him from the first transfer window. It is France's almost World Cup hero back in 2022. It's the Frankfurt striker, Kolo Muani, and he takes the famous number nine. He's our best chance. He's our biggest bet of scoring goals and finding the back of the net for Spurs as Randall joins us for £56 million. It's a big step up. I hope he's ready for it. Ange has the faith in him, and he has that special something. He's got a goal-scoring knack. If it's anyone other than Emiliano Martinez in between the sticks, he should be fine. He's a similar build to Harry Kane. He's tall, six foot two, and in my belief is the perfect realistic replacement. There's just so much going on when it comes to strikers on the roster right now. We've had a big exit and entry, and now it is a loan departure for the Irishman, Troy Parrott, who has just been a wonder kid for years now, but has never really gotten a full first season at Tottenham, and he's now sent out on loan to Falamalecao over in Portugal for a 12-month spell. Also coincides with Dane Scarlett joining Argentinos Juniors over in South America for a two-year loan deal. Now, you're probably wondering who's going to be a backup striker, who is going to support Kulamuani just in case of injury or suspension. And after all that Harry Kane money was lying around, we had to go out and spend it on another homegrown player. It's an Englishman. We've added him back into the game. The gambling man himself, Ivan Tony. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with the news, he's actually been removed in a recent squad update in FIFA. But I've added him back into this game. Now, it fully comes into fruition as he joins us from Brentford for 28 million pounds will be a perfect super sub to come in off the bench. He knows the Premier League. He knows how to bag them in England. Now, if we can just keep him off Bet365, stop all the gambling ads, he'll be a sensational pickup. Let me know down in the comments below with that one, guys. Do you think it was worth an eight-month suspension from football just for betting on Brentford a couple of times to lose? That means we won't see him back in FIFA until the new game and like halfway through next season. It's just the FA being the FA, typically out of touch. We have a few more departures to report on and a player sales have been happening this window unlike the others We have the Welsh centre-back returning from his loan spell over in France It's Roden at the back just surplus to requirements was probably not gonna get any game time He now joins Nottingham Forest for 9.8 mil now It's most likely gonna be our final actions of the transfer window We're approaching deadline day and it's another loan deal adding and not for the first time It's Pape Matassa now off to Spezia on a two-year loan deal in Italy everyone on the transfer list was sold besides Ivan Perisic who's actually retiring at the end of the season and Harry Winks who had a transfer to Parma fall through. No other big deals to process as this is the Champions League group we've been drawn into in Ange's first proper stint in Europe with Spurs. Now he's been drawn in with Borussia Dortmund, Galatasaray and Lask in Group D and now here is our strongest first team starting 11. New arrivals Kola Muani starts in up top alongside Kunde in the back line. Udoji returns Turns from his loan spell in the Italian slot straight in at left back. Kim Min Sun is now the captain, one of the most experienced players in the squad at 31. And the likes of Rafa Guerrero, who we're converting into a midfielder, Tony and La Celso will make the bench. One of the key tenants that ChatGPT and AI gave us was to promote youth, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. I wanna pick out some of our best academy talents that have been with us since the first season, and it looks like there's three on the cards that are just begging for a first team call up. It's Jamal. Ibrahim, the Algerian center mid slash cam with five star weak foot, five star skill moves. He's got a potential of 88 to 94 and is only 17, so he'll be joining straight up alongside Nadir Said, another African talent, this time hailing from Morocco and can pretty much play anywhere in the spine at six foot one and has 86 to 92 potential. And last but not least, pretty much the exact same archetype, this time he's French in six foot six. It's the sweeper defender at 18 years of age, Damien Vidal. Meanwhile, yeah, the rest of them are pretty subpar. They're all mid. Ibrahim joining Raul Oviedo on a short-term loan deal and Nadir Sal will be off to Shenzhen FC over in China for a two-year loan. Now we're about to also convert Rafael Guerrero from a left back to a center mid and if what I've read is correct he is going to receive a massive boost once we finally switched him over. We're making it official and there it is. Excuse me what? From an 83 to an 89 a plus six just like that. He has turned into a world-class baller overnight. He's turned out to be one of the best pre-contract free signings ever. Ange is out here in North London working his magic again. It's back-to-back -back seasons finishing in the top four, this time in fourth place again with a total of 85 points. In some seasons, that's
that's enough to win you the league, but Liverpool take it out with 93 points against Man City. We finish above Arsenal again. He just knows how to do it. And getting relegated was Norwich, Nottingham Forest, and Brighton. I've simulated through the calendar, and Spurs have actually won a trophy. It was out of our control, out of our hands, but in the big dance at Wembley, they break the what? 10 plus year drought. Probably at this point, it's 15 years with a 4 2 6 goal thriller win against fellow London rivals Chelsea. They beat Arsenal along the way in round six. It was just their time. And over in the other domestic competition, it was Liverpool to take it out 2 1 against United, and we were knocked out pretty early on to Chelsea in round three. But hey, we end up getting the last laugh in the FA Cup. Over in the Champions League, this is where we properly qualified, and in Group D, they topped it alongside Borussia Dortmund with 13 points, and it was an unfortunate 3 1 loss to see them booted out of the round of 16. An early elimination saw them with a 5 4 aggregate defeat, and eventual champions Real Madrid took it home against Liverpool 3 2. We'll be back there fighting amongst the best in season three, but let's take a look at some of our key performers and the crucial protagonists of this team as new boy Jules Kunde is the first 90 rated player on the roster. And in terms of goal scorers, it was Dejan Kulusevski with 32 goals and nine assists from the right hand side of the Swede with a 41 goal contribution campaign, but not improving or upgrading whatsoever. Karim algorithm is bugging right now as Randall got hit with a long term broken tailbone injury towards the back end of the season, but he was going well despite that 26 goals and 10 assists. He's debut outing in the Prem and he is just about to hit his prime, but Seung Hyun Min, a player who is currently fading out of his prime at 31, he's still the team captain. We need to have backup long term successes in mind for the Korean, but he's still going strong with 23 goals and 15, and another player who just continues to impress. Upon that plus two position conversion upgrade he got, moving to a cam, he was the main playmaker of the team with 28 assists and 10 goals. An outstanding signing as Rafael Guerrero, another man who really took advantage of that position conversion. The Portuguese utility man with six goals and nine of and Tony off the bench with six goals and Pedro Porro. These 10 goal contributions were extremely valuable. Rodrigo Benzica still managed 15 assists and one goal in 22 appearances. And look at these youth academy kids out on loan. Ibrahim with a plus seven and Nadia Side with a juicy plus 10 upgrade. And then our main lad in between the sticks, David Raya with 14 clean sheets in 53 appearances. It's all starting to come together under Postacoglu's guidance. And most importantly, he has won this club a piece of silverware. I'm sure more success and trophies are on the way. And he's got all of Australia and North London chanting, come on you Spurs. And the board actually, despite us winning some trophies, we have been gifted with less of a transfer budget. Only 85 million pounds to go crazy with this summer. All of a sudden, money's tight under Daniel Levy and we're gonna have to make some smart signings. You guys have to hear me out on this one. I know Hugh Min Sun is still performing at the top level, still producing goals and assists, but we need to have a future-proof plan. You guys know what career mode's like. As soon as you pass 30, the game just is unforgiving and will hand out downgrades like no tomorrow. So we've got to have a plan B and it's none other than Karim Adeyemi, who we're planning to convert into a flat-out left winger. It should give him a bit little boost and upgrade as we agree to deal with Borussia Dortmund for 55 million pounds. We snatch him away from Germany and get this summer market season three off with a bang. We are launching it, showing our intent. And it can also put in a shift at striker and play on the other side. So you can pretty much play anywhere in that front three. This was a player who I thought could have had a redemption arc upon his return from Napoli. It's Tangui Indombele. And after pretty much zero contribution last season, we have put him in a little bit of a swap deal. A trade offer with Southampton for their Argentine baller Alcaraz. It's just a straight up swap deal, no fee involved. It's Carlos donning the white of Tottenham and Ndombele headed the other way. The French midfielder was just surplus to requirements like this guy, Davidson Sanchez, the Colombian center back who's been a long-standing servant at the club. When he arrived, you thought he was gonna be the next big thing, the next generational talent in defense, but it just wasn't meant to be. 16.5 million pounds, we agreed a fee with Newcastle again. Some more exits eventuating. We have a couple of loan deals here with the man himself, Harvey White, now joining Norwich on a one-year spell. And the center half replacing the Colombian at the back will be Kim Min Jai from Napoli. And I know he has a high chance of joining United. He's a big target for the Red Devils this summer. The Korean giant who has been just electric for Napoli in their charge towards the Scudetto in real life. We've picked him up for 23 million pounds, agreed the fee while working with limited finances. He's in his prime, but he hasn't really reached the staggering heights that people think he will reach. He 
It's just another rotational option. Ladies and gentlemen, we have breaking news. Another opportunity to see Spurs potentially lift a piece of silverware, and that's in the Community Shield. Up against the Premier League champions, Liverpool, we have the chance. I know it's just a pre-season cup, but it's a trophy nonetheless, and can Ange do it? And it's Colo Muani. His boy, his replacement for Harry Kane to come through and score the winner in the 74th minute. Son was injured, Poro got a red card, but Spurs prevailed. And whilst the boys were busy on the field, winning trophies, will busy off it on the transfer scene, negotiating for some loan deals out the club. The summer business was still going on in the background, and we've got a lot to report on. Jamal Ibrahim, the Algerian academy player, is off to Norwich on a two-year loan deal. And joining him on the exit front is Troy Parrott, the Irishman, on to Strasbourg for a year. And another academy prospect that Postacoglu promoted, Damien Vidal, is joining Ibiza on a two-year loan deal. And Tottenham OGs, Jamie Bowen, Alfie Devine, and Lyons Foster will all be out on long-term loan deals. And Alfie is actually out representing England on the international level at the Under-20s World Cup in real life. He is revealed our Champions League group for our second year in a row. It's season 3, and this time drawn into Group H alongside Atletico Madrid, who did knock us out last year in the round of 16, Ajax and Celtic. It should be a blockbuster clash to see who gets top spot. We're not selling Yves Pesumas, so don't you worry, as here is our strongest starting 11 on paper. We now have a 37-man roster. We've got the depth, and the quality is starting to come through. Tottenham are now starting to be a feared opponent in the realm of footballing endeavor. This is our chance to really make a statement and go deep in a few competitions. It's flashbacks. It's nightmare fuel of the 2015-16 season when Spurs fumbled the title to Leicester City. It's lit. Oh, man. How close could you get? 90 points. Liverpool take it home with 91. Ange and Tottenham now proving that they are Premier League contenders and we're so close to being crowned English champions. And over in the FA Cup, we were knocked out. It was a round four elimination to Blackburn 1-0. And then the Carabao Cup shows that we absolutely destroyed Liverpool at Wembley 4-1 but they ended up getting the last laugh in the league. It's another trophy to add to the collection. It would have been the perfect send-off if we actually took home the Prem and now over in the Champions League they didn't make it out of the group. It saw them finish in third. Ajax and Atletico Madrid beating them to the punch and now they have a Europa League final after being relegated to the round of 16 in this competition. Everyone knows it's a standstill moment when Spurs are in a major final. Two of our best players as Kolo Moani's picked up another long-term injury and Kunde is suspended. And Dika and Adeyemi come through to the starting 11. We're going to sim this one, watch it play out and see if we can win a Mickey Mouse treble. And that's exactly what we do with Udoji claiming our second. Guerrero got things underway and Dembele half the deficit. Technically, it's counted as a double in the news graphic, but we'll take it. Three trophies in one season. It's absolutely phenomenal work by the boys. They've been knocked down a peg or two, given reality checks here and there. Some pivotal moments that took place this season, that'll set him up for future success as our man up top, the golden boot, the man who knows how to find the back of the net, Kolo Muani. He's out, he's picked up another MCL injury for three months, but he scored 38 goals and 12 assists in the meantime. Getting injured pretty late in the season as Dejan Kuluzewski with 26 goals and 12 assists, another spellbinding campaign from the Swede. He's definitely coming into his own on that right hand side with a major plus four upgrade as Jin Min's son at 32, he's still kicking it. Class is permanent over here for the Korean with 21 goals and 6 assists and James Madison I've never even seen it of all my time playing Korean mode 40 assists in a season with 55 goal contributions in 52 appearances he's been the signing of the rebuild so far Foster Koglu knowing how to get the best out of his players as our Dane Hoiberg with 9 goals and 3 and Destiny Udoji is starting to claim that left wing back spot as his own with 5 goals and 1 assist Karim Adeyemi with limited involvement in off the bench but he's showcasing signs that he is ready to overtake Sun in Season 4. And just look at all our players out on loan. Alfie Devine with a plus 11. That's what you get in this loan deal lottery. Damien Vidal at Ibiza with a plus 9. You just never know when you send players out on loan. Jamal Ibrahim improving a plus 4 and has potential to be special. And the main improvement we needed was David Raya in between the sticks. The Spanish shot stopper with 23 clean sheets. This team have put on a display and just proven that he has broken the Spurs curse. They know how to win trophies. And if a slice of luck went their way in the league, they could have won the domestic treble. But that's all in the past now. Let's move on to season four where things are going to get bigger and better. It's time to start signing quality over quantity. We can attract that type of talent now with a transfer budget of £81 million. Though for some reason, the board have been giving us less and less money each.
each year. We have one major money move in mind to keep us going this summer, but we're still working on outages, and that includes Alfie Devine. After his impressive loan spell out, he is headed back on out to Atletico Madrid this time. A high-profile move, two years, alongside Troy Parrott, who will join Wolves on a one-year loan spell. You never know with these loan glitches. They could hit anyone. Our one and only priority for summer season four was to secure a world-class CDM. With Hoiberg getting older, it was time to usher in the next generation, the new generation. And we've got a loan deal cutscene in the middle of it. Pape Sa will be headed off to Torino on a two-year loan deal. Finally, we get straight to it. Eduardo Camavinga arrives in the Premier League for £70 million. Pounds. We've snatched Real Madrid star man off them. And you can look at his versatility. He can play in the middle. He can play a left back even. And we're not only celebrating this marquee signing, we're also celebrating a UEFA Super Cup win. Yeah, we've just been winning these minor trophies, taking him to the bank. And our new man has that something special. We've pretty much spent the entire budget on him. He'll slot straight into our first team starting 11. Just like that, a brand new puzzle piece. As they've been drawn into Group A of the Champions League, Atletico Madrid again. Galatasaray and Genk. So a tricky group there. It's pretty much the last remaining trophy we have left to capture besides the Premier League. It's a do or die season and just look at that starting 11. That Kunde Romero centre back partnership. It's the great wall of Tottenham. So does Ange's North London powerhouse have that dog in them? Let's find out. You have got to be joking me. You couldn't write it into the script. It's the finale to end all finales. The Champions League final North London derby. The big dance in 2026 and it's Arteta versus Postacoglu. And we are fresh of winning the title in flying colours. 95 points, one loss all season and we completely destroyed the competition. United, Arsenal, Man City. We've finished above the Gunners in every single Premier League season so far which is just a testament to how much Ange has transformed this club from the ground up. As over in the FA Cup we lost out in the semi-finals to Chelsea 5-4 and penalties so that could have been another cup final berth. And we also managed to secure another piece of domestic silverware here with the Carabao beating out Man City 3-1 in the final. We have a cheeky domestic double and the chance to capture a treble as we went undefeated in the group stages finishing top of Group A qualifying after the round of 16 where we defeated RB Leipzig narrowly 2-1 in the quarters. It was another narrow 2-1 aggregate scoreline and then in the semis to make it an all English or North London affair it was a 4-3 demolition job of Manchester City and here we are. How did we get here though? Who were the main heroes of season four. It's sad to see that Kunde is suspended for tonight's final but we'll go in to see touch base and check on the rest of our star players as the golden boot winner himself. It's Golomuani but not all the goals are coming from him. It's a combination the trident up front with Randall, Dejan Kulusevski and Adeyemi. The German, the natural successor to Him Min Sun on the left hand side with 22 goals and 6 assists. Kulusevski the Swede with double figures in both goals and assists and the other the player to also achieve that feat was James Madison. After his 40 assist campaign, he came down from that high with 27 and also back in 14. Not bad, you know. And our brand new captain, Kamavinga, the new boy, he's been pulling the strings right in front of the defense with seven goals and five assists. Destiny Udoji, who has now fulfilled his potential. Rafael Guerrero, who's just been a veteran figurehead. The Portuguese being a beacon of wisdom in the middle of the park with six goals and seven and mirroring those stats is Hoiberg. And it just looks like everyone has excited under the Aussies tutelage. As Bentaker stuck by the project, he didn't submit a transfer request and was happy to be second fiddle. So we've had plenty of players, youth prospects out on loan. We've respected the key tenants to Postacoglu's managerial masterminds. We've got there with an Aussie in the roster as well. Matty Ryan is here for the ride and our man in between the sticks, the main Spaniard shot stopper, David Raya. And this is probably the first rebuild challenge that hasn't had a player in the roster valued at 100 million pounds or more. Usually we have a good three or four at this this stage but it just proves to you and shows how much of a team effort this was every single cog in the machine is important for this Spurs squad and they have the potential tonight to go down as heroes fresh off winning the Europa League last time out this is how we are starting up against the Gunners those are your two team sheets tonight as we head into battle for a historic event a possible changing of the guard moment here the North London showdown it's a derby of the highest stakes Ange ball in a Champions League final who would have thought? Not me. The boys are going out to battle tonight and the trajectory, the journey he's taken this club on should be studied for the ages. A team that was at the butt of all jokes who've made a name for themselves not winning any silverware. Then Mr. Postacoglu comes storming in the door with players
Bears fans and pundits alike writing him off and now he has the opportunity on the biggest of stages to reveal to the world his true game. People after tonight are going to start owing him apologies as Kola Muani will get us kicked off. And Kuluzewski, we're just controlling possession, trying to find an angle and Kamavinga with a long shot, warning shot from range. Critical interception as Adeyemi tries to get involved. Kola Muani finds him on the inside and he threads it to two Arsenal defenders and Adeyemi with the flare shot the German was trying to be fancy. Kuluzewski again with his five star skills ready to fool the Arsenal defense but he's being too tricky, too fancy with it. Martinelli now inside to Gabriel Jesus, the Brazilians linking up and it's a powerful strike. It's the wrong side of the net. Well, it was actually a save from David Raya. Corner opportunity now from the set piece. Bukio Saka puts that one inside. It's bobbling around everywhere and Raya has to come to our rescue as the German now with his high pace gets into the box, gets into the area. Had a little scuffle. Madison was there and it's fallen down to Kola Muani and it's straight. Throws it inside to Guerrero who is the oldest player in this team, believe it or not. And he still keeps going here with the ball ricocheting into his path and he provides the assist for James Madison, the man who is actually linked in real life to head to White Hart Lane. And he opens the scoring here in a game of few chances. It's been a cagey affair so far. And the English international heads home after Rafael Guerrero just kept going. And that wand of a left foot lifted it over perfectly. Saliba leapt up like a salmon, but to no avail. And Lingo at the back post was James Madison with a picture perfect header hanging in the Louvre. Ange cannot be controlled on the sideline as we open the scoring here in the 34th minute. Spurs strike first blood. Ooh, oh, Guerrero has been all over the park in this match. And now Kolomuani has the chance to link up. Kuluzewski here is just opened up for the Frenchman. This could be two, and it is two. This Arsenal defense is all over the place, and they've completely capitulated. Our top goal scorer ever since we signed him. The reliable number nine, Kolomuani, shows up in the big game, leaves the demons of the World Cup Final 2022 behind him, and launches an absolute rocket, gets in between the two Arsenal center halves slots it into the top left hand corner to get us our second arsenal can't handle the intensity of Ange ball at the moment two zip now is not the time as we take down saka guerrero i hope it's not a red he's gone through the back of him he's been our best player on the pitch we go into half time two nil to the good gonna be an interesting team talk at the interval it's the most dangerous lead you can have in football so we're not celebrating yet arsenal is still very much in this madison out wide to kuluzewski who's had limited contribution tonight but he sent Tierney for a hot dog and nearly completed a brilliant skill goal. But Kamavinga finds Madison and forces a great save out of Ramsdale. Look at this dominating football. The brand of football we're playing at the moment can't be tamed. It's Odegaard now. Indica caught out of position. Indica now. That was nearly the moment. Arsenal making some substitutions. It's Balogun on for Patino. So they want to score. They're desperate. Bukio Saka now over to Martin Odegaard. And the tricky Norwegian finds Balogun fresh off the bench. And that was his moment. The American fires the chance over the bar. And the former Dortmund boys were about to link up before Arsenal stole the party. And Indica needed a big challenge there. But David Raya to the rescue. Martin Odegaard, it's a long throw. And now Arsenal inside, it's Balogun now through to Saka, and that is their time, that is their moment, they've got the goal back, refusing to pick the ball out of the back of the net, it's their hometown boy, to give them a lifeline, an opportunity back into this game, we've laid off, and actually taken our foot off the gas, a couple of lucky deflections later, and they half the deficit, oh no, all of a sudden the momentum has swung, and we can't string, two passes together, and it's Martinelli inside to Balogun, now finds Jesus, and David Raya, is keeping us into the lead. Saka finds a target and it's out to Ben Wyatt. No one was marking him off the post. Get it clear. Oh my goodness me. We're living dangerously and it's cleared out. It's just back and forth at the moment. Arsenal are purring and they're about to hit third gear. Another counter attack on the cards. Muani back inside to Guerrero. And there is a lot of options on this left hand side. Adeyemi's just going to use his pace here, you know. And there's an option inside. No, that's not what we wanted. Oh, the Scorpion kick off the bar and Ramsdale on the line. 
line saves it from getting us our third. Angie's getting some managerial tips from bloody Kilman on the sideline. But what a sequence of events. God, Kulusevsky calling for calm. We have a chance from the set piece. A big header there from Adiemi. This Champions League final has escalated quickly. And let me tell you that. Jesus now charging forward. Kamavinga with a game-saving tackle. Referee, that's not a yellow in a million years, mate. Another counter-attack is on the cards as James Madison... Oh, what a challenge from Gabriel. Now they're starting to come up with some big moments. Arsenal, Guerrero tracking back. He might sacrifice a red card here, you know, and he does in the final minute. It's his second yellow. He's been our best player on the pitch tonight, believe it or not. He's been everywhere, the Portuguese, and now our most experienced player has been sent for an early ice bath, but it was a professional foul. It needed to be done. The Norwegian Odegaard is standing over it. Saka with the dummy, and the wall needs to jump here. Raya! Oh my goodness me, that's our second best player on the field. Let's not force this into extra time. Four minutes on the clock. Ramsdale is up. This could be a spellbinding finish. A spectacular end as Udoji heads it away. Adeyemi knows there's no keeper. He just needs to make it past halfway. And here, he's in with a shot. You know, Karim Adeyemi to end the North London derby. And that is it. Our number 14 from halfway smashes that one into the back of the net. Ramsdale was off his line. He puts the final nail in Arsenal's coffin and ends is now a European champion with Spurs. Who would have thought? And that's a brand new core memory unlocked for all those Spurs fans in attendance tonight. I mean, it wasn't quite from halfway, but you get it. He ran the whole entire pitch. And that is the third to finally put this game to bed and end the all-English contest. It was a game that had nil-nil on the cards in like the first 20, 30 minutes. And then it just unraveled into an extremely entertaining affair. But that's what Ange Ball will deliver. In this four-year project, it has gone from strength to strength and hopefully that's how it pans out in real life. As an Aussie, I am rooting for Ange. Can he break Spurs' trophy out in real life? I'm not quite sure. Spurs fans, let me know down in the comments below how do you think he'll perform in his first season. As it's no longer Mission Impossible, it'll be Eduardo Camavinga to lift the Holy Grail here tonight. The Champions League final in the palm of their hands. Tottenham are your European champions. And long live the Postacoglu era. Guys, if you did end up making it this far, make sure to drop the video a like down below below hit subscribe turn on the notifications so you never miss out the videos and all the content i got planned this summer my socials are linked down in the description so make sure to drop them a follow as always i've been sir bchd have a great day and i'll catch you guys in the very next video from the section i see la london paris tour for days don't sleep months or month till late 5 a.m need to catch a break spark up a blend is this lemon haze gelato to the chest got me feeling blazed ea i'm in a game fuck around you you might get played from the section I see LA, London, Paris, tour for days. Don't sleep much, so I'm up till late. 5 a.m. need to catch a break. Spark up a blunt is the slam and haze. Gelato to the chest, got me feeling blazed. EA, I'm in the game. Fuck around, you might get paid. I'm trying, I'm trying, I know this life ain't long.